This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi, I'm Shelton Menery. This is Ruhan of the Fomori, and I got one thing to say to you, you did it to yourself. There's the general, that's Ruhan of the Fomori. I actually chose him because he doesn't really go with the theme of the deck. The smarter uh, play is probably Zedru, uh, so I just wanted something a little outside the box, but those are the colors I wanted for the deck. Uh, Ruhan, I try to just play him turn four every time, create a scenario where you gotta deal with Ruhan while you're letting me wait to do all the other shenanigans that the deck has in store for you. Uh, basic lands, seven islands, Island. Six planes. That's the best of the full art planes right there. And seven mountains. So plenty of plenty of fuel for the spells you're gonna need later. Uh, Vesuva will copy, you know, of course with the M14 rules, we're gonna have different things that we can copy here. Maybe somebody else's Academy ruins or some such. Uh, I really, really doubt that I'll ever copy a cradle. But uh, Vesuva obviously copies things. Rogue's Passage, you know, every now and then again, you want Ruhan to just be unblockable. So you get him in there. Uh, Vivid Meadow, probably because I had a foil one and I wanted to do a little Mac Mana fixing. There's Academy Ruins. There's enough artifact things that I might want to try to bring back uh, that you'll see later on. Although I've taken out the Mind Slaver because even Mind Slaver is just too mean. Command Tower, of course, flagship land of the set. Got a nice shiny one. Zorius Chancery, we need some some buffs. Clifftop Reserve for red and white. Boris Garrison for red and white. Uh, this is a reflecting pool, although you see it's in Italian. I'm trying to collect as many Italian foils as I can for my decks. I've got probably 10% of Crash in Italian at this point. Uh, is it Boiler Works? Steam Vents. Sacred Foundry, of course, all our all our shock lands from Ravnica, Glacier Fortress, Manamo School at Water's Edge. Uh, you know, I've used, I've put this in the deck, and I'm not really sure how often it's been that relevant. Every now and again, I uh oh, onboard trick somebody and untap Ruhan and block with it. But yeah, it hasn't done all that much. Uh, there's a nice far and black border tundra. Mistvale Plains, very important to the Sunforger package that you'll see later on because it puts stuff back onto the on the bottom of your deck. So those are the lands. Uh, 38 deck is a little mana greedy, and when you're not playing green and you need to be mana greedy, you, just, you got it. You have to make sure that you're hitting your land drops. So there's the Sol Ring. We're gonna. I think everything else is in. Uh, CMC order uh, for for ease of viewing. So Sol Ring, obviously, there's your one of your mana boost. Uh, Boros Signet. Since we're not playing green, we definitely have to go into some mana rocks. Uh, I'm, not, I'm a bigger fan of Ramp because the lands tend to stay around, whereas first Nevenirals disc, there goes my mana base. Uh, Felwar Stone. There's always somebody playing at least one of my colors, probably two of them, so I'm okay with that. Uh, Mind Stone. You get this later on, and you can sacrifice it to just draw the card. It's certainly not all that uh, cost-effective to Academy Ruins a Mind Stone, but sometimes, you, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's a uh, Zorius Signet. Mimic Vat, you know, the theme of this, the deck being, and you did it to yourself, means that, uh, you know, I gotta get hold of your creatures at some point, uh, or copies of them. So, uh, we're gonna kill things pretty routinely, uh, putting great things under the Mimic Vat, uh, Certainly early game, don't mind the Solemn Simulacrum or whatnot under there. Dark Seal Ingot, indestructible, Mana Rock. Angel's Trumpet gives everybody vigilance, which seems cool. But then if they don't attack with something, they have to tap it at the end of the turn and take a damage. And in the deck, I've set up situations where it's painful for you to attack with your guys, or you don't, you, you simply don't want to get caught attacking with your guys. Well, you got to tap them all. You have to tap them all down. And if guys come into play after your combat, you still tap them at end of turn and take damage for them. So, Angel's Trumpet, 
changes the changes the combat rules and changes the combat math for people, and sometimes can really create uncomfortable situations for other players. There's Sunforger. The, the Sunforger package is uh, 12 or 13 cards, so it's it's not as dense as some of them. You know, I've seen 18 and 20. Uh, card Sunforger packages. Uh, don't underestimate just giving Ruhan plus four and battling with him. Uh, but he's going to get all those instants that you're going to see later on that, that are really the, the heart of the deck. Uh, he was, Sunforger wasn't actually in the deck initially. I had it in an Oros deck and then just kind of realized the Ruhan is the way it needs the Sunforger. This is my uh, Richard Garfield signed Helm of Obedience, um, which means I can do anything I want it to do. It uh, It's going to mill top of somebody's decks for, for X mana, and if there's a creature in there, I get it. Uh, this is the this is certainly the one that I want to recur with Captain Rose. I just keep coming back because again, you pick that guy, the, the green the green deck that's playing the giant fatties. I'll take that. I'll take that. There's a uh, Gilded Lotus. That's a uh, modded by uh, Dust Shade, Yogg 07, uh, one of his really nice pieces of work. Again, deck needs some mana. Uh, the king of all the altars that I have is this Gilded Drake done by Eric Klug. Uh, you know, Eric is, a, is just a fantastic, fantastic artist and uh, consented to do a few pieces for me, this being one of them. Uh, I want for the altars, a lot of the altars, I want stuff that's not available in foil, not easily available in foil, and I mean, Gilded Drake just isn't. Uh, you're going to see another Eric Klug altar later on, but this is just the Mac Daddy of them all. This new Prop Guild Mage, I've actually been a little disappointed with him. Uh, the, the detainability is expensive, and I'm usually holding the, that mana back for other stuff. And it's not like you can go, well, end of your turn, detain. Oh, it's my turn. You're not detained anymore. Uh, so that he's got a little he's got a little mark next to him on my deck lists for when new sets come out. If there's something better in that slot, I'll probably replace him. It's always Will Bender. We're gonna punish you for doing things. Boros Reckoner should probably be called Boros Punisher. Uh, I mean, obviously. If you're if you're watching this, you you know that there's a blasphemous act in here that's going to happen, and that Boros Reckoner is going to really dome somebody good. Vishino Heretic has been a superstar since the earliest earliest days of the format, and blowing up other people's saucy artifacts is good, and hitting him in the head with them after is even better. So I I really love this card. Uh, it's it's you know. We all played in the beginning days. We all played this when we played red. Now I think it's kind of a hidden gem in the format. Goblin Flectomancer is just a guy I can sacrifice to redirect something. So uh, onboard tricks sometimes are good to have because you know that people are watching. You know, saying, like, oh, I can't time stretch. <laughs> Ara Thief, another sort of old favorite from the format. There's a lot of great enchantments out there. And, uh, you know, this guy dies, he flies. The, the, the thing that a lot of people don't see is that he flies. So he's going to block anybody. You know, your, your big fat um, Rift the Awakener are going to come across. Ara Thief's getting in his way. And I'm stealing your, I'm st you know, stealing your Beastmaster Ascension and your Lurking Predators from me. I love that guy. There's Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, I'm one of the few people that actually likes this art better than the original art. If it were, it would be even better if it were full art. But that's as close to a, a must include in the format as there is. Uh, Phyrexian Metamorph is obviously going to copy things uh, at a at a bargain price, and you know, again with the new M14 rules, things are going to get a little crazier. Uh, you got a Gisela? I got a Gisela. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, so I like this, and it's an it's an artifact, so I can bring it back with the um, uh, Academy Rooms. There's Metamorph's older brother clone. Again, just solid. The the one thing about the one thing about copy cards is they're less expensive than the things you're copying. So you make a big mana investment in, of something. You pay seven mana for your Avenger of Zendikar. I'll pay four for mine. And uh, I think one of the reasons that, that clone and copy cards are so popular is because of the 
the value that you get out of it. It's lower investment for the same impact. Chrome shell crab, uh, there are a number of morphs in here, so we like to make sure that everybody doesn't think it's always Will Bender. And again, it's chrome shell crab. It's really not all that awesome. Uh, but when I unmorph it, I'm going to take something of yours that is, that again, you've made a, a significant investment. Another of my favorite morphs, Mischief, is Quainar, because when you unmorph them, you can make a copy of an incinerator sorcerer. People think it's well, Will Bender, they might not do something, but it, when it's, uh, you know, you draw X cards or something, yeah, I, I, can, I can copy that. The best thing about him is you can turn him back face down again. Uh, his, his, his morph cost is uh, three, which is insanely cheap for what he does, I think. And then it costs five to turn it face down, but uh, it's an end, that, you know, that's one of those end of turn, just turn him, just turn him back face down. Sun Titan is just always good to get back something that you've lost early in the game. Uh, somebody's going to have disenchanted one of the enchantments or blown up a mana rock or something. Get him in there, and he's a super solid creature for the colors. Molten Primordial will definitely make you do it to yourself. Uh, generally, the rule is send back to what you... To the original uh, guy, what you stole in. You don't, you know, you know, you don't, you don't work out all this deep strategy. You just bash people in the face with what's theirs. Of course, molten primordial stealing, stealing things that kill people doesn't matter because you were going to give them back anyway. There's Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. It means that you can really ramp up the damage pretty quickly, and there are there are things like that Blasphemous Act that we referred to earlier that suddenly are dealing 26 to people with the Boros Reckoner instead of 13. And, again, with her in play and Ruhan, suddenly suddenly there's you're in the danger zone for getting killed with commander damage. That's the creatures. There's one plane, Planeswalker, Tamiyo. Doesn't necessarily have a thematic... Um, into the deck. It was just, you know, it came out, it's good, I wanted to play with it. And, it's, and some, I think that's okay to do with your deck sometimes. You know, you know, not everything has to be a, a slave to the format or the strategy. You just Sometimes you just want to play good, fun cards. Uh, Tamiyo tends to not survive long, so uh, getting to play with her is... Moving into the enchantments, there's land tax. Again, it's a it's a little bit of a mana greedy deck, uh, and you wanna you wanna have it. So if you're not in green, land tax is one of the best things to early just get your hand get lands in your hand. You're not necessarily ramping up, but you're making sure that you're hit, hitting your land drops every turn, every turn, every turn, every turn. Blind obedience. Uh, this is a card that, of course, suggested itself immediately for this for this Ruhan deck. I'm a little squicky about playing extort cards in card in decks that don't have black in them, but I'm, I made an ex exception for this particular deck. Uh, the rest of my extort cards are all in black white decks. Karmic Justice is certainly an example of you did this to yourself. I mean, my stuff's just sitting here, and if you don't, if you know, if you don't mess with it, it's fine. But if you want to start blowing up my crap, eh, well, there's going to be there's going to be some payback. Uh, it's it's a very it's one of the best rattlesnakes there is. Repercussion makes things awkward fast when people want to have combats, uh, especially opponents have combats. And remember earlier we had that angel's trumpet, so people are going to either attack or take damage. So now they're going to be in the devil's choice of am I taking damage or am I taking damage. Uh, they may choose to tap their guys and just take the one each turn instead of you know, the seven that they might take from an attack or block. And of course, repercussion with Blasphemous Act. I've gotten into the couple of hundred damage pretty quickly. You know, somebody plays a somebody plays an Avenger of Zendikar with this in play, and you know that they're going to die soon. <laughs> There's copy enchantment. There are a lot of great enchantments wandering around out there. Obviously, co copy my own. Copy that repercussions for maximum walls. Uh, copy your Ristic study. Copy your lurking predators. Even uh, maybe get some guys for free. Speaking of Ristic study, there's one. Um, I, 
I don't have a lot of card draw in the in the deck, so something that's passive like this, well, once you, I, I love, I love passive effects that you don't have to make an investment in after the original investment. So all risk that study is, is, did you pay the one extra? I, I try not. I try to not be the annoying Ristic study player. I want to be the the helpful reminder. Hey, don't forget to pay one. Not you didn't pay one. Draw card. So that's that's definitely a hand filler. Aether Flash does two damage to uh, uh, every creature when it ETBs, and um, of course, with repercussion in play, that might be a thing. Uh, it also just keeps little weenie hordes off your, you know, that, again, that Avenger of Zendikar or that Storm Horde that somebody wants to play. Uh, it's, it's, it's not happening. Uh, people like to recur their. Uh, they're, they're smaller guys, and they're you know they're just like run through eternal witness recursion and whatnot. Nope, let's, we're, just, we're just killing them every time they come in. Love this card. Uh, the reason I don't have a foil copy is it's available in foil in seventh edition, and the art is terrible. The art is absolutely terrible. So we talked a little bit about making this, making uh, things uncomfortable and awkward for other players. Well, Power Stone Minefield is one of those cards that does, because whenever a creature attacks or blocks, the minefield deals two damage to it. Again, if repercussion happens to be in play, then it's really, really uncomfortable. But I, I want to make pick players think about their attacks and blocks. I want them to really have to consider: do I do I want to do this instead of just slamming in? Uh, Power Stone Minefield is one of those things that does. And then the card right behind it, nope. Martial Law, again, passive, just detain something because sometimes there's stuff I don't want to have to worry about dealing with, and it gets it needs to get detained. Uh, Mimic, somebody else's Mimic Bat is is a real good detain target. Light Minefield is the one, the other one that goes to Power Stone Minefield. does basically the same thing, only uh, it's only attackers, and it counts the number of attackers and does that much damage. So if you want to, if you want to battle with 11 guys, they're each taking 11 damage. Uh, at one point, at one point I had Grand Melee in here, so you had to attack. Um, that went out in favor of a few other more control elements, but that was always uh, worst. You know, worst hole and um, grand melee were always so crazy. Uh, if worst hole, if worst hole was just that you have to battle with everybody when you battle, I'd, I'd be happier with it. But that you have to tap all your mana all the time. It's, it, you know, I, I'm not a stacks deck player, so I don't really want that many stacks effects running around. All right, next card is uh, a sorcery. So we're getting we're getting out of the enchantments into the sorcery. It's another clue altar, and it's one of the it's one of the foundations of the deck. That's acidic soil. Because what do, what do EDH players love to do? Ramp and play fatties. And at a certain point in the game, you're going to have 18 or 28 lands in play, and for three mana. Everybody's taken big piles of damage. Uh, certainly, certainly killed people with this um, because my my land camp is going to be relatively low compared to everybody else's, and it's it's going to be boom. Get this get this thing out there. Just hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it, and then when you know when somebody gets out there, I mean, if I could play Primal Order in this deck too, I I'd play, I'd play that too. But again, another great uh, Eric Klug altar there with the acid for the acid soil. There's bribery because everybody's got something awesome, and they should be smashed in the face with it. There's chain reaction. Uh, again, goes with goes with the you know if chain reaction not going to do much if you don't play a big pile of guys. If you if you overextend, if you try to do too much, too bad for you. Sleep will keep you tapped down. Of course, sleep along with that angel's trumpet means they're just taking the they're just taking the damage and not attacking. I thought I thought once or twice about putting um, sirens call in to go along with the sleep. Uh, that would be kind of blowouty, uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to find room for it in the future someplace. There is Final Judgment. Uh, it's another Italian version. Uh, it's, there's a lot of creatures that, that just have to get exiled. You know, you, you don't want to have to face dealing with things multiple times. And in you know, good a good commander deck has good recursion, so exile is just way better. 
knowledge exploitation, again, you're going to do it to yourself. If you if you really want me taking two extra turns with time stretch, go ahead and put it in your deck. There's that blasphemous act that we've been talking about. Again, it it's always for value. Uh, playing it generally for one man or maybe two when you have to. It's a great card to have in your hand and a great card to go with some of the other trickery that's in the deck. That's the last sorcery. Now we're into instance. Aurelia's Fury. Uh, I like a great deal. Again, it's a little mana. It's a little mana hungry, but I just like the tap ability. I just like the fact that uh, you know I can opposition a couple of your guys if I need to, just in case. Um, and the rest, the rest is just kind of gravy after that. Honorable passage. Uh, if you want to attack me with a big, uh, big fat guy, you know I'm going to prevent the damage no matter what it is with this. But if it's a big fat red guy, you're going to you're going to eat some of it yourself. Nothing better than killing somebody with their own jet. Uh, Dawn Charm is flexible. You, you need fog. This form, in this format, in the in the 2013 instantiation, you need fogs in your deck. You absolutely need fogs in your deck because you can't control everything. And there's going to be that guy that has the turn where he squeezes um, defense of the heart and. It's Crater Hoof Behemoth, then Crater Hoof Behemoth and Avenger. Here we come, tack you for 184. And sometimes you just, you're like, uh, well, why don't you tack those guys? Not that I have, not that I have Dawn Charm in my hand. And in the Armada Games EDH League, saving other players gets you a point. So, you can pile up the points with that. Uh, restore, restore the Peace is, again, a nice trick when you taken some damage or somebody else has taken some damage. Just, you know, it's not just when you've gotten damage. So if you're not in, you're not even involved in the combat and it's dealt damage, get it back. Uh, it's nice, obviously nice for tokens to make them go away forever. Uh, a nice little a nice little card. I debated this or riot control in this slot here. I was wanted to play riot control in another deck, so First damage again. You want to do a big pile of damage to me? <laughs> Why don't I, I would I would further gain that instead. That's, I just, you know I want to hang around. I want to play the game. I want to be here. I don't want to sit on the sidelines and watch. Blue Sun Zenith, obviously nice, some nice recursive card draw. Uh, again, one of the one of the few card draws I actually have. One of my favorites, Cerebral Vortex. Um, sometimes players get greedy. Want to draw spells? I want to draw cards. Uh, certainly, with um, Enter the Infinite, people people get insane and draw up their deck. Now, if somebody cast Ent if somebody resolves Enter the Infinite, they probably have some backup, so I don't kill them with the with the Cerebral Vortex. But just in case, uh, Cerebral Vortex is more likely to murder somebody who's gotten crazy drawn cards off a greater good than it is off the blue card draw. But uh, I, in a recent in a recent game uh, with the regulars at Armada Games, we ran into a hive mind cerebral vortex situation and it, it got it got out of hand pretty fast. There's reiterate because sometimes stuff's gotta get copied. You know, when you do something awesome, I'll do something awesome. Uh, you know somebody somebody thinks it's funny to um, to Blasphemous Act once, well, maybe Blasphemous Act twice is <laughs> something's gonna happen. Boros Fury Shield, another <clears throat> is another damage prevention that is gonna kick it back to the to the person that attacked you. Uh, I'm really, I mean, this deck I played it enough, uh, both uh, traveling to events and at home, where uh, when I'm playing it and I have four or five mana up, people are real hesitant to attack me. Like, well, I could attack you. You might not have anything, but I don't want to take 14 to the face either. So Boros Fury Shield, real nice. I'm not playing green. Get all your green stuff out of here. And that's, Hyration is all green permanents. So, Mana Reflection and Rari's Wake and you know, all those tokens you've created from Rift or Avenger or Rist the Redeem at a, at a bargain ba basement price, I, I, I get all that stuff off my face. And usually, no, usually 
people are going to have enough stuff in mid or late game where they're going to have to pitch some of it and not be able to replay it. Harsh Justice, uh, a great portal card. It's basically, again, damage prevention that kicks it back only. This is a triggered ability, so I actually have to eat the damage instead of instead of preventing it. But again, there's going to be that retributive strike, so you may not want to. This is the card that that suggested the deck in the first place. Uh, one of my Monday Night Gamers, Todd Palmer, also an Armada Games employee, said, said at the computer one day, he said, come look at this card. I said, oh yeah, there electric feedback. And he said, well, 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 could you make a deck around this? I'm like, well, somebody is eventually going to play Cabal Coffers, Urborg, Exsanguinate. And if... You know, Exsanguinate for 50? Sure. You die first. Essence Backlash is um, a relatively new card, and I love it because there are fatties. In this format, there are fatties. There are people that are casting Crater Hoof Behemoths and that are casting World Spine Worms and are casting Lord of Extinction because it's cheap. Well, for five mana, you're going to catch your Lord of, Lord of Extinction, and for four mana, I'm going to dome you for whatever its power is, which is, you know, usually 80 or something. Mirror Strike is, is again, a retributive strike. Uh, the first time I ever used it in this deck, and there's a player who was playing an Omnath deck, and it was like 49 49. It's like, hmm, I don't know if I want to attack anybody. It's like, you ain't got the grace to attack me. So he, so he bit. <laughs> he bit. He attacked me. And he didn't... The, the thing was, he didn't have a mana sink. So he couldn't, he couldn't just spend the mana on something. He was in his combat. And uh, he died to his mirror strike. I've also, a couple of times, killed people with their own Blightsteel Colossus with mirror strike. Turn the tables with repercussion in play can be pretty silly because, you know, a bunch of things attack and you just, again, more damage prevention for me, but can also kill one of their big creatures uh, and, under other circumstances, just kill the player. I like gather specimens, especially off of living death. Uh, sometimes it's just really nice when somebody else is... As Avenger or whatever, uh, the, the thing about doing it in response to Genesis Wave is Genesis Wave's a May. Now, if you get somebody that's not paying attention and just goes, oh, okay, I just cast all these things here, uh, of course, gather specimens in response to Primal Surge, also a big blowout. Because then, because then you're rooting for the other guy. You're like, get, 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 get into your 96th card before you hit something. There's Radiate. Uh, Again, so, sometimes stuff needs to be copied. Uh, damage spells, damage prevention spells, things like that. Uh, the, the number of just insane situations that this card can create are legion. One of the first times, one of the first times, um, way back in the ancient, ancient days of the format, we had a new guy come to play with us. It was a, kind of a relative beginner in Magic, and somebody had played, somebody else had played a Micah and Lattice. And the turn, and the next guy was like, I'm not sure what you're going to try to do with that Mycosin Lattice, so I'm going to disenchant it. And new guy says, um, can I radiate that? <laughs> so, of course, we were back to square one. There's desertion, because killing you with your commander is sweet. It's really sweet. And the last card in the stack, another Eric Klugalter, Reflect Damage. Uh, great story from Gen Con last year. I was playing a five-player game with Eric Klug, Patrick Jarrett, David Williams, uh, Brian David Marshall, and we were playing star format, so we were playing teams, and Klug, Eric was one of my allies, and he had that guy out, and he was sitting to my left, he came to the end of my turn, he said, well, I'm going to I'm gonna activate Heartless Hitsugu. And I just shook my head, and I said in my best dad who's talking to his teenage son who's gotten drunk for the first time voice, I said, Eric, you did this to yourself. Uh, 
And of course, he then sent me the Heartless Hidetsugu Reflect Damage, uh, and it's been a star in the deck ever since. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite. See you soon.